Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den. On this week's episode, we are going to do the conclusion of, remember, the Sloop of War build. So in the last episode, uh, it was more of a paint tutorial of the base. Briefly talked about a little bit of the construction of it. Uh, but in this episode, there's going to be a little more construction, some crafting, uh, and painting all in, in one episode. So quite a bit uh, to get this ship completed. So let's take a look at it. i got it right here. Uh, and as you can see, we got all the sails on there. Uh, I did some ship accessories. I got the flag completed. I tried my hand at Dead Eyes for the very first time. Uh, and then uh, I built this uh, lantern, crafted this lantern for the ship. Just kind of a, wanted a different look to it. Um, as you can see, we did a two two colored sail. I put a little patchwork on it. Uh, so a lot of details that we added. Uh, we did our cannons. Um, swivel guns, all that kind of stuff in this episode. But the other thing I did in this episode is I wanted to make this ship portable. So in the bark build, I made that ship portable as well, but I wanted a bigger one. That was kind of a test pilot, if you could say, uh, to see a uh, proof of concept to see if this would work. Uh, and really what it is is that these masts are not glued down. Uh, I have them loose in here, same as the bark, uh, but this is in a bigger scale. Um, uh, I want to go to, uh, well, I'm going to uh, Adepticon this year, and I really wanted to bring a ship with me. Um, and I wanted to fit it in my carry-on. I mean, I didn't want to stick it in the luggage that's going to be in the bottom of the plane. <laughs> uh, I think there will be uh, very few left of these uh, pieces left if that, that happens. So I had to make this portable. So I, I took a chance and, and uh, made it uh, that way in this way. So I'll show you what I did. Uh, it's the same as before. Uh, it's just loose inside there. So you can just uh, bring that down. And then same with the uh, front of the ship. Uh, and like that. So, And really, I just want to collapse it so it fits in the bag. I'm probably going to wrap it and protect it in there. But uh, this way I can transport it with me in my carry-on luggage. Uh, <laughs> uh, because I really want to bring this along with me. So anyways, that's uh, what we're going to be doing in this uh, video. Um, if you like what we're doing in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when we're working on projects like this. All right, so let's get down to the table and let's start uh, crafting and painting. Okay, so I decided to uh, start by uh, salvaging some of the pieces left from the galleon build. Uh, if you guys watched that uh, tutorial video, uh, I did a demolition of that and I had a lot of uh, spare parts. Now, for the sloop of war, um, you're, you know, I'm going to need some of these, uh, especially that fighting top. I want to add that fighting top in there and some of the uh, uh, different rigging pieces in there. Now, what made this challenging is, and of course, why I replaced it in the first place, is I hot glued it. So I had to take that all apart with an X-Acto blade. Just showing you, I got them all pulled apart. But I had a, a happy mistake going on here, where uh, the leftover brown paint was on this. So you can see where I picked off the uh, hot glue, but the rest of it's brown. I sanded it down, and... I know, it gave it a, a real good uh, patina to it. If you can see, look, at it's got a real, uh, and it looks really awesome when I add the washes to it. So that, that kind of just came out by a fluke <laughs> uh, that it came out that way. But uh, just showing you some of the other pieces. I cut a, a little bit of the larger piece of mast just because I want to put that to the middle of the brigantine. Well, it's going to be the sloop of war now, um, but uh, that, that fighting top. So I'm just showing you, I glued those pieces together. Um, and now I'm going to add the dark tone wash. So it's similar to the other ship builds I've, I've done. Um, and I use that dark tone first on everything. Uh, I'm really excited about that fighting top with that leftover brown paint on it. Uh, so I hit everything with that, uh, with that dark tone wash. So then uh, I glued the anchor and the cannons. I decided to go with a medium cannon instead of the light cannons that come with the kit. 
uh, I wanted to upgrade for my Sloop of War. Um, Firelock Games sells those separately. You can uh, order medium guns uh, on its own. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to keep the swivel guns. Um, so I sanded them down first. Uh, and, and then I uh, glued them together with Gorilla Glue. Uh, similar to the bark build, you guys have already seen this. I've done this in other videos, so that's how I put them together. Uh, and then I cover them with my multi-service black craft paint. Uh, just seals them in real nice. And then I add all my colors over top. So just kind of showing you, there I just covered them all in their black paint. Uh, and there's uh, the dark tone on all the uh, rigging pieces of the mass and the fighting top and all the other pieces that I needed to uh, to uh, change that. So I'm probably going to hit the, the dark tone a little bit more on there. I sometimes put a double coat uh, and then I will move to a strong tone and put that on top. Uh, same with, as the bark build. Uh, I just want to get that kind of a, a deep wood look. Um, but I got that little extra brown on that fighting top, so uh, it's going to make it a little, a little more rustic, I think. All right, so similar to my other builds, uh, I always cut out uh, templates uh, for my sales out of cardstock. Um, a lot of these are pre-made. I've already made them for other ship builds. Um, and then I use this, uh, it's called Fabric Creations. Uh, it's, I bought it at Walmart. Um, they have it in their fabric section. They have pre-cut fabric. And I like that because it's, it's fairly thin. Uh, and it takes well for the craft paint. So I'm just showing you, I'm going to trace all those on there. You can see the denominations on there. Those are how many of each sale I'm going to make. Uh, and then once I trace it onto that paper, I will cut it out with fabric scissors. So I separated this one because this is the flag. So it's a little different. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, uh, I'm just showing you that uh, I always make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to fold it over a dowel uh, when I put that uh, craft paint on it. So I'm just giving you an example of what I'm going to do. Uh, again, I've shown that in a previous video. I'm just giving you a brief uh, uh, overview of uh, the same technique I'm going to carry over in this one. Same thing, trace it out, cut it out, uh, and then I'm going to put it over that dowel. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use that same multi-surface black craft paint. Uh, so in my other sales, I've done them all with white or that uh, vintage white. But this is a pirate ship, and I wanted to really do a black sail. So we're going to do the multi-surface black craft paint on this uh, on these sails, uh, which will make it uh, hard and real nice and keep its shape. Uh, put that put it on that ball to get a, a billowed uh, shape on it. Uh, and uh, I've, I've shown this on previous videos. This is how I do all my sales. So I'm just going to give you a brief, just quick uh, start, starting up on that one. Uh, but I plan on doing something a little different. And I know it's probably not historically correct, but I want to make it two-tone. Black on one side and uh, kind of a deep red on the back. Uh, I've added that little square piece on there. That's going to be a patch. Uh, and I just wanted to show you that that's how I had, I had adhere those patches. I just put it on there, cut a little piece of fabric, and then paint over it with a craft paint. Once that hardens, they'll be stuck together. Uh, and then I will paint the details in afterwards uh, to make it look like it was a repaired sail with a patch. All right, so this is how I do my uh, flags. I use dowels. Uh, and then I, I put those, I uh, double folded over that uh, flag fabric, and then I paint it with the black craft paint again because it's, it's going to be a black sail. Uh, just going over all the pieces again, I've added the strong tone to it. I'm just showing what it all looked like. So I kind of build these things in stages. I go back and forth. Uh, and, you know, I went back and forth and let them dry while I move on to the sails. Uh, and then I'm showing you, I'm going to construct... Uh, a lantern out of little pieces of wood so those little little small pieces are matchsticks those square pieces i got at michael's uh and i'm going to use the leftover like sprue pieces or <laughs> from the sprues of the uh ship parts that firelock games provides they're excellent for making tops of lanterns <laughs> so don't throw those scraps out there come in handy so i'm just showing you the different stages i i took uh, to make those uh, side panels, that's actually cardstock, really small cardstock. And I just glued it together with uh, a white uh, glue there, that uh, tacky glue. 
same with the top I added those little details on to, to those are all just parts left over from when I popped all the pieces of the uh, uh, brigantine out I wanted to have a little bit of a different lantern on this uh, pirate ship opposed to some of the other previous ones that I would use as a standard Firelock Games lantern. So I'm showing you, uh, once you build it all, before you put the cap on, uh, once everything's dry, I filled it up with hot glue. Uh, and uh, that way uh, it, it makes the center solid. I'm planning on painting the whole thing uh, and doing the same old uh, uh, light paint technique. All right, so all the pieces are all glued together. They've been all uh, added with the color. Just showing you the same thing. I always use that clear Gorilla Glue. Uh, and I'm starting to glue together the mass. So I don't really show you how I put them together. I just glue them and kind of stage them. I follow the uh, instructions for most of the Brigantine build, uh, except for the main mass. It's going to be different. We're going to we're gonna alter that. Uh, just showing you the flag is dry and complete. There is the lantern, but it's, I just painted it black. Uh, and all our medium cannons we got there and swivel guns. So now we're just showing you that this is how I kind of use those uh, foam pieces to kind of just let everything uh, dry straight. Um, and uh, you notice that that main mass, I, I just glued the top part together first, uh, and I plan on adding the fighting top after it's dried. Uh, it's just be a little easier to install. Yeah, it's an extra step, and I have to wait a few more hours for everything to dry, but uh, uh, but it's worth it. It's easier to get that fighting top on. All right, so I'm going to go to that uh, same color combination, Moon Dust, uh, that Dynamic uh, Yellow, and the Lava Orange. Uh, and that's what I use to light the windows on the ship. Uh, it's also what I'm going to use to light up the, the lantern here. So I am going to show you the painting technique one more time. Um, this is a little different because I just crafted this out of scraps. Uh, and it's, uh, but I just wanted to, uh, like I said, make my own kind of lantern. Just a more a rustic looking lamp or a lantern for this pirate ship. Opposed to, the, like I said, the standard one at uh, Firelock Games. Which I've used on almost every one of my ship builds. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to do something a little different on this one. <clears throat> now, I, I've done this uh, same kind of lantern in uh, my cityscape uh, when I build my port. Uh, a lot of the lanterns that you see in that port build are all handcrafted. I built out of scraps uh, from uh, leftover sprues and, and pieces left over from uh, um, the, the... It's essentially all the pieces that the, the uh, ship parts are sitting in that Firelight Games provides. <laughs> all that extra wood is extra. Uh, comes in handy. I plan on using the little really small bits. I want to maybe use them as uh, casings of uh, bullets or ammunition for my Blood and Valor uh, dioramas or displays or maybe putting on uh, on some of the bases of some of those miniatures. <clears throat> All right, so you can see that I'm just uh, um, uh, covering it uh, with... Uh, uh, just mixing the colors. So I've done this technique before. I lay the three colors down in stripes, and then I start going back and mixing them together. Uh, ultimately, you want that center to be kind of an orangey-yellow glow. Uh, the top very orange, uh, and uh, and we got to bright the uh, the moon dust uh, on the very bottom there. That's where the closest to where the flame flame would start, uh, and you get an orange or glow out from it. Um, that's how I like to paint my uh, lighting on my lanterns and, and the windows. So I'm just kind of showing you that whole thing. This actually took a little bit more time, um, mainly because uh, uh, it, I'm kind of painting over that uh, uh, hot glue that I put in the center. So it, it takes fairly well to paint, uh, but you just got to put a couple of coats on it. Uh, and I want to make sure I have a nice solid uh, color on there before I, I'm going to come back with and add uh, black stripes. And really, that's kind of why I put that cardboard in. I could have just painted black stripes on there, but I wanted to uh, add that cardstock in there. It's a little easier uh, to paint something that's a little raised on it, and it just looks a little bit better. I didn't do that on my original lantern, so I did for my cityscape, and, and uh, I improved on it. You learn, you make things, and you make them better as you go along. <laughs> things that I regret doing in the past. So we're all done with that. 
Okay, so we're going to go a little bit of oak brown now, and we're going to start uh, painting uh, the cannons. So this is going to be very brief. I'm just going to like really touch one side of the cannon just to kind of show you the color combination that I'm going to do. Uh, I know that in my previous videos, I kind of went really into depth in painting that cannon. And, you know, I kind of wanted to shorten it up for you guys in this video because um, we've seen this technique before. I've done it in, in the uh, bark build. So I, I kind of use just a small flat brush, and I kind of use it as a, like a mini dry brush. And I dry brush uh, that that uh, brown on. So then I move to a fur brown. So you can kind of see this is kind of what I do on my ship, but in a, a much smaller scale. I use uh, miniature paint opposed to craft paint, uh, mainly because we're doing finer details. Uh, and But I, same concept. I'm just dry brushing that uh, fur brown. It's a lighter brown over top of that uh, um, oak brown that I put down in first. All army painter paints. I'm uh, just showing you I'm planning on doing all the wood with that uh, lighter brown. So we're just going to keep skipping ahead real quick here. Uh, and then I'm going to use the uh, desert, um, desert yellow there uh, to give it that uh, highlight. Kind of a replacement for the camel, really, uh, the craft paint. It's similar in color. Uh, gives me the similar effect. Uh, so I'm just going to lighten it up. And this is kind of like the same kind of colors that we added to the top deck of the ship. I want to carry over that same color scheme into the wood on uh, my cannons, anchor, and uh, swivel guns. So I am going to use this craft paint right in here, uh, just a little bit to water down a bit, uh, using that uh, uh, yellow ochre. Um, really, I just wanted to add that color to these pieces. So uh, you can see I'm going to do some circular motions, a little bit dry brushing, uh, not really touching the wheels. I really want to just stick to the wood. Uh, and uh, I'm going to hit all those pieces again. So, like I said, we're just rapidly going through the colors here. Uh, just showing you the color scheme that I'm using and the layers that I put on uh, on my cannons, swivel guns, and anchor. All right, so there we go. We've got our yellow ochre on there now. <clears throat> now we're going to move to a gunmetal. So I like to dry brush gunmetal <clears throat> on the little black. So on the cannons, anchor, and swivel guns. I just will uh, use that same flat brush and just kind of just tap it. Just like I would do the ships, but in a small on these anchors. Just want to add a little bit of metallic so it kind of keeps its black color. Uh, but you add a little bit of metallic to it. Uh, I really like, this is the way I like to do my cannons. Uh, I will add a, a strong tone wash over top once it's dried. Uh, and that gives it a really good rustic metal. Uh, I decided to, originally I was going to add a little bit of uh, rust to it, but I, decided, I opted it not to. Uh, and I just left it uh, with uh, the strong tone wash on it afterwards. Just showing you, gonna, I'm going to hit that lantern too, by the way. I didn't mention that, but it was also was that uh, metal, gun metal. All right, so that's the uh, Dragon Reds. It's kind of a deeper red. Uh, and we're going to do a two-tone red color on the wheels. I'm going to start with that Dragon Red, uh, which is a darker, dries darker. And then we're going to add that uh, lighter red uh, to it, uh, the Pier Red, uh, that I like to use uh, from Army Painter. That's my highlighter. So I plan on doing all the wheels, probably the little bulbs on the end of the, uh, uh, the swivel guns. Uh, weapon bronze. So uh, I decided to do the top of the lantern with weapon bronze uh, and uh, all the bolts and uh, little fixtures and, and buckles and all the stuff on, on these cannons. Normally I would use greedy gold, but I decided to go with something a little bit different this time. I went to this weapon bronze uh, just to make them a little more distinct or different from my previous builds. And we want to add all those colors in first before we start adding washes. Wash should washes should be your last step. So on the top there's those little uh, bolts and stuff like that on top of this cannon. I hit that all with that uh, uh, weapon bronze. So I was just showing you I'm doing all the pieces again. And the red should be dry by now, so we're going to move back to the pure red, uh, like I mentioned before, to highlight uh, those wheels. I'm just going to give it a little highlight. 
uh, it's hard to see there. Um, I guess I need to get some more paint. There we go. I, I keep forgetting that the actual camera lens is over here. <laughs> it's a lot easier if I bring it over there and you can see it a little bit better. Uh, but it's just really fine work. Essentially, all I'm doing is just touching a little bit on the bottom just to give it a, a little bit of a highlight. It might be hard to see in this video, but uh, it, it, it that's what you should do is tap it. So all the sails are done, uh, but I used black craft paint. And the problem with black craft paint is it's shiny. So I want to make it more matte on the sails. So I went to a matte black army painter uh, paint, and we're going to use my big dry brush. Uh, and we're going to dry brush that uh, that black over top of it. And that will make it uh, more flat and dull. Um, I know it looks wet now, but once it dries, it, it really takes that uh, shininess of the uh, craft paint away. I didn't want it to have that uh, shiny look to it. Uh, so also, once that, I still have that black on my uh, dry brush, I wanted to do the tips of the ship. So it kind of looks like they're they're burnt or they're... Uh, worn in and rustic. I did the same technique on the galleon. I really liked it. Um, it hit certain areas underneath uh, where they connect. Uh, just give it a real dark feel to it uh, and dirty on the mass here. Um, so I'm going to hit all the bottoms. I'm going to hit all the edges of the uh, of the of these uh, where the sails go. Uh, and I do plan on adding some reds to it afterwards and just give it a, like I said. I like to give it a real menacing look to it. Uh, and it really gives uh, those masks a really worn uh, down look. So once you add all those uh, lovely washes on there and stuff, and you got really nice wood uh, uh, grains in there, um, then you can add these blacks onto it, and it really looks uh, good, uh, really good worn out wood. So usually what I do is I start where I want it to be the most uh, darkest black, and then kind of just pull the brush backwards um and that'll leave it to uh, you'll get it kind of faded into the wood so you don't have a i'm not going to do a big definition on this uh, on that galleon build i really put definition where i put a black stripe or a line i'm going to leave it pretty raw in this one uh, on this pirate ship all right so strong tone wash uh we're going to hit all those uh lovely cannons full of guns anchor everything we just uh we just did all that time painting. Now we're going to add a wash. So I, I add the wash all over the gun metal, uh, all the areas I put the metallics on. And sometimes I'll put a little bit just in the middle of the cannon or around, around where the wheels are, just a smidgen, just to look like it's a little bit aged and it makes it a little darker. Uh, but I really liked uh, the way those combination of those colors, that black uh, and the uh, gun metal and the strong tone really makes a to me, a very convincing looking uh, cannon. Uh, I know there's lots of other techniques out there and th they all look fantastic, but uh, this is the way I prefer to do it. So. so I'm just showing you, did that, planning on doing all of them, including the lantern. So now we're gonna go to uh, white. Now this might be a little strange, uh, but we're going to hit those sails again that we added the black on. And what I want to make it look like is that maybe the, the sails are a little sun bleached. And that black's bleached a little bit. Uh, and it's a little worn out with some white. It also gives me an opportunity to add a little definition to the sail. So it looks like there's some separation where they would have sewn it together. Uh, it's a little hard to do that on, uh, it's easier on my other sails when, when it's white to uh, emphasize that. But on, on the black sail, it's a little tougher. So I, I decided to do this kind of distressed white look to it. Um, so it, it just, and I really work it in. Uh, don't try to leave it too bright. Um, but I, and then I just kind of pulled it up in several places. So it looks like there's gaps in the, in the sails. Unfortunately, I got it a little bit off the screen there. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going around the bottom of the sail, um, I didn't, I didn't go to the tops on any of my sails. It's mostly just around the bottoms. But uh, I, it added a real, real good weathered look to it. Really added a lot. I was really happy I went with that white. I was kind of a little scared going to the white because I didn't want to alter that black. But here I can show you a little piece there. 
Now, I know I jumped ahead and didn't show you. I, I, I just used uh, that uh, red, the dragon red, and I used some actually of the uh, orange, uh, um, sorry, the yellow ochre uh, to make those patch colors. Uh, and then I, I went back to, I really liked them when I did my windmill, adding those little stripes. I don't know, it just added a little more character to it. So uh, the red square, I do plan on adding a little uh, white stripes to it as well. Uh, and you can see where I've added that white. It just gives it a whole all uh, weathered look, uh, an old sail, uh, opposed to a brand new one. Uh, I think I went to and added a little bit of pure red just to give it a little bit of a highlight in the center. I really like having two-tone colors on a lot of things. And I think I went to uh, the dynamic uh, um, yellow from Army Painter to add to highlight that yellow ochre as well. So it also had a bit of a glow to it. But it's a patch. should look a little weathered and ratty. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to fill in the whole patch. This is my lovely line work. <laughs> uh it's not bad. I use that uh, flathead brush, uh, and then I have to go back over it a few times because I kind of made one line bigger, one kind of line crooked. I'm trying to freehand it while you, uh, showing you on the camera, but uh, uh, once I stopped filming there, I did actually straighten those out a little bit and, and uh, fix them up a bit. All right, so there you can see that's a finished look to it. Um, all the sails have got that white added onto it and uh, painted those patches. So I'm really happy with these weathered sails. So I went and added a little bit of that, uh, well, that little bit of paint in that brush still. I added uh, a little bit of weathering to that flag. So I'm just showing you, I'm planning on doing the skull and bone cross, the standard classic uh, um, the pirate flag. There's lots of other different options out there. Uh, historically, there's uh, umpteen different designs. Uh, but I just wanted something that would be universally understood as a pirate uh, uh, symbol. Um, and it's a standard skull and uh, crossbone. So this is kind of how I paint them on the flags. So I kind of measure out where the head is going to be. That's where those two white dots are. The head's going to be in the middle of that. Uh, and then I make an X underneath that. So you got like two dots and an X. Um, and then you're going to kind of fill in the rest of the shape from there. So the X's are going to be the two crossbones, and obviously, and uh, and then the two dots are going to be one that's the top of the head and, and the one's the chin of the skull. Uh, and then I kind of just freehand. Uh, it's rounder on the top and skinny or narrow on the bottom where the jaw is. Uh, I kind of just peered over and looked at that... Um, the way it looked on the Firelock Games uh, card set for the Unaligned Faction there, the Pirates, uh, and just kind of did something similar to that design. I felt that would be uh, sufficient uh, for what I was trying to do here on this pirate ship. So I kind of do the silhouette, so I kind of uh, do the opposite. I do where the eyes are going to be. Now, I painted this all out. Uh, I don't show you uh, painting the whole thing in. Uh, I'm just showing you how I kind of outlined it. Uh, and then I fill in the rest of the gaps in with white paint. Uh, and I do go over it later with a bit of a uh, watered-down yellow ochre color just to give it a... Similar to the picture on the on the deck of cards, uh, it's got a kind of a weathered yellow. It's not completely bright white on the flag. I wanted to make it look weathered like the rest of the sails. So I, don't, I didn't think it would be good to just keep it plain white. But while I'm laying it in, so on the end of the two the X's, I kind of make usually just two little bulbs. And those are the, the bones, uh, end of the bones. Um, just just simple design. I don't want to make it overly complicated. It can be tricky painting in the ruffles to make it look uh, like it uh, is straight on. Uh, you'll have to play around with that. I've done a few sales now, so I'm getting a little faster at doing these. Um, but the first one was definitely challenging. Um, just to kind of see, you know, what would the uh, head look like once it's wrapped around. So try to draw it like you would think it would be if it was laid out flat, but you have to go around the ruffles. So that's the finished product I'm just showing you. Very similar to the Firelock Games uh, symbol that's on their deck of cards. 
And all I did was just fill in the gaps where I left off. But I start the the pirate flag always the same way with those two dots and the X. So there you go. I added that uh, yellow. So I guess I uh, I added a bit of a desert yellow, uh, skeleton bone. Actually, that skeleton bone I showed you, and I watered it down. Yes, <laughs> showing you the the Majara water, uh, just to emphasize the fact uh, that I watered it down, and I just put it over top of the white, and it gave me that uh, stained yellow look that I was looking for. That really matches the uh, um, the the box of the uh, Firelock games that provided. All right, so there's the finished product. So now the back, it looks a little ratty-tatty. So it was sitting on the ball, and then, of course, when I peeled those off, the back is, there's no paint there, really. There's a little bit left over. So I wanted to do, like I mentioned, the two-tone. So I'm going to another craft paint because I wanted to harden the opposite way on the back uh, so we don't get those curlings, as you can see on the sails there. So I went with a cardinal red, which is a really, really nice, folk art, deep craft, multi-surface paint. Um, and I'm going to cover the backs of all these sails. You can see I got remnants of old sails on the back there. <laughs> you know what? It adds to all the the uh, the rustic look to these sails. So all right, I put all that in there. Uh, and it's a little tricky on the edges because they're curled up, but I, you know, I got a little paint on my hands, but whatever. Uh, I got it all in there. I'm just showing you that I plan on painting. So all the sails, paint all the backs of them that uh, with that cardinal red. So then I decided to do something that I've never done before. Uh, and this was a last-minute decision. I wasn't even going to do this. I'm going to attempt to add a few dead eyes. So obviously on a, on a real ship, there's a lot more dead eyes than this. Uh, and these are lovely little buttons that I found at Michael's, my favorite craft store. Uh, and I thought they had a nice patina or rustic look to them, and I thought they would be good as a dead eye. Uh, now, a dead eye has three holes on it. I have four, which is a button. So I ended up uh, doing a cross uh, with two and attach it to that uh, bottom piece. And then I used one of the holes is uh, that I used to uh, tie it up to the, uh, the mast. So in this build, I'm just showing you the other ones I put on there. I do plan on making this ship portable. So I didn't, I, I don't plan on gluing the mass in, uh, and I'm just gonna rig it uh, and uh, and uh, make it uh, loose in there so I can move it. All right, so the sail should be dry, uh, and the cardinal red is dry on the back. Now what I didn't show you in this video is I do highlight the center of that cardinal red with pure red by Army Painter, my favorite highlighted paint that I use, just to give it a really uh, bright red in the center. Uh, and I, I didn't add that in the video, but I just wanted to tell, let you know that I did that as well. Uh, and that's the final step I did on those sails. Uh, and then I hot glued them on to the mast. So I know that that's not everybody's favorite way. You can sew these on, but I hot glued them. And I didn't trim the bottom of it, as you can see, uh, to leave it more rustic looking as a maybe damaged pirate ship. So I'm showing you that uh, I put all the rigging on. Again, those masts are not glued in. Uh, I just tightened the rigging on either side. Uh, and actually, just having the rigging tied in certain ways, it just keeps the mast in, in place. I was actually surprised. And now I, I tried this out on the bark build as a proof of concept before I went on to a bigger ship. Uh, and it works so well on the bark, I, I figured I'd have to give it a try. I do plan on uh, going to Adepticon uh, in 2022, uh, and I really would like to uh, to bring this ship with me. Of course, I live in Canada, and uh, it's in Chicago, so <laughs> I'm going to have to bring this on the plane with me, and I want to put it on my carry-on. All right, so this is it. This is the final product. Uh, we're all completed. Sales are all completed. Uh, I'm just giving you a quick uh, look at the uh, cards again. And we'll go look at We added our pirates into the ship here. Uh, I do uh, want to run a Brethren of the Coast kind of uh, force in here with uh, William the Kid as the captain. Uh, and uh, he's got some interesting choices uh, for the crew here. So just giving you guys uh, an overview uh, of the ship. So just giving you one more view of those dead eyes, uh, those sails that we uh, hot glued on. Um, you can uh, sew those on, that type. 
um, but uh, just want to give you one more look at it. So if you guys like this uh, video, uh, make sure you hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing to the Butter Den and get first hand information on when I uh, post uh, these videos and these projects. All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching, and I will see you in the next video.